We have with us today Dr. Darren McKnight from Integrity Applications. How do you make a difference? What I do is I try to make very complex scientific problems simple. Because if not simple, everybody can't contribute to them. It's no benefit for people to think I'm smart. I'd rather have them think that that makes a lot of sense. So the way I do, I try to mobilize really a, a variety of people to a single purpose. And lately my purpose has been mostly in orbital debris and understanding the risks that they pose to spacecraft. Why space? T tell us a little bit about your story. What's your story behind it? Yeah, well, I'm, I've, been, I've been involved in space since I got my, uh, my doctorate back in 1986 in aerospace engineering. And what I really found was that while the world is getting more unified, more globalization, um, in space, it's even more so. I mean, people may not know, but there are 65 countries that operate satellites in space. It's not just three or four big countries, it's 65 and it's going up every year. So we need to be able to behave and, and uh, responsibly and work together in space because we can't recover from anything we do wrong in space. Um, things are moving at seven and a half kilometers per second. If you get a flat tire, your tire keeps going at seven and a half kilometers per second whether you're driving on your car or not. So people, it's hard, to, it's hard for people to understand how the space environment is so different than the terrestrial environment. So my job is to try to make that seem accessible and get more people to contribute to that. Dr. Darren, you had a very interesting powwow session this afternoon. What are the key takeaways from that? I think the key takeaways are that what we're doing right now in the space environment is not as simple as it looks. The really critical issues are one layer deep. Oftentimes we'll uh, hear about things related to the movie Gravity. I don't know if you saw the movie Gravity, but they're talking about a satellite hitting a satellite making this cascading effect. Well, in reality, that's gonna take hundreds of years. But right now, right now we have satellites that are being hit by space debris, too small for us to be tracked. And we also have very large objects in space that are coming very close to each other and nobody's paying much attention to them because they're not operational. And unfortunately, in the short term, that could affect everybody's ability to use space. So if you had a foot stomper, what, what I'd say is what you can't see can kill you. Dr. Darren, how can research and development into the aerospace industry help us on the Earth? So the main thing right now, I believe, is we need to be proactive about solving problems. What we have a tendency to do on Earth is wait for a problem to manifest itself. Wait for there to be global warming or wait for there to be 10 accidents on a roadway before you put a new traffic light in, we don't have that luxury in space. We need to be proactive and solve the problem before it occurs. And I will tell you, Aggie, have you ever heard of anybody getting an award for preventing a disaster that never occurred? No. People like to heroically respond to disasters, but aren't willing to invest the money to prevent it. Space is a different environment. We don't have the luxury because once it occurs, the debris that happens from a collision, it spreads all around the Earth. So it's not going to be localized like sometimes we have problems on Earth that we can get away with letting it happen before we really try to mitigate that risk. We really need to prevent that event from occurring. That's what we need to do. So how can we do that? How can we as human beings living on the planet Earth, how can we contribute to that? So right now there's a, a, a technique called active debris removal. So we have large amounts of space debris in orbit. There are over 23,000 objects in space and only 1,400 of them are operational. A little over 1,000 of the 23,000 actually do anything. The rest of it's junk. Some of the very large items could potentially collide with each other and make tens of thousands more pieces of debris. We need to grab those now. There are some, a number of international organizations in Japan, in Europe, in France, in, in Russia, in the United States, in Singapore, who are coming up with technology solutions, but there isn't the push to accelerate it because we haven't had a disaster yet. So again, we have this problem. So I, what we want to do is try to encourage people to be proactive. Sometimes that means spending money on preventing a disaster before it occurs. Okay. Thank you very much for sharing your thoughts. Thank You're you welcome. for your time. Thank you, Adam. Thank you. It was fun.